Pop 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 persuadable. How <laughs> yo? What's going on, everybody? So this is a dope kite session. I was very, I was so happy about this kite session, and I hope that you guys like it as well. I'm gonna show you kind of what I do here and what happened. This is, uh, this is, I wouldn't say it's my first seven cipher kite, but it's definitely like one of the first seven cipher kites of like one on one, like the entire time. And hopefully I can show you some of, uh, some of that skill set of how to juke, etc. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this, uh, video, you'll enjoy it. Just kick back and, and watch the chaos ensue. Maybe I can say a funny joke or two. Um, probably not because I'm not that funny. Now, here's what's interesting about this kite. I got nothing. Nothing. I don't have an increase in healing speed. I don't have a speed bonus. Nothing. And neither does the Geisha. So this is a, a just a raw stock hunter versus me. <laughs> We're naked. And I threw the... Now, really, what separates this? I, I honestly think... That this is one of my best kites that I've ever done in my, my professional career with, with Identity 5. And the reason being so is that this hunter is actually not bad, right? The hunter the hunter is not doing anything wrong, right? So there's one thing when you watch kite videos online and then you see the hunter, even if it's a top tier hunter, you see the hunter make some like uh, easy or questionable mistakes. And then you're like, oh, like no wonder why that person was able to kite because the hunter made some mistakes. This hunter doesn't really make any mistakes. So the hunter is playing exactly how I would probably play, minus a few little tiny differences, but nothing crazy. And we're still at seven ciphers right now, to put that in perspective. And I can't heal because I don't got my heal bonus, right? And I don't have my speed bonus, and I'm running out of pallets. So I've already, I've already somewhat accepted my fate to a degree, I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to do my best to, uh, I'm going to do my best to just stall her. So we're at four ciphers now, and now I have no pallets left. So it's like, all right, what am I going to do? And this is what separates this video from other videos, because I literally stay in this area the entire time. My rationale from here is I'm going to try to just survive for as long as possible. I'm a one hit kill now. All right, so I'm just going to keep buying time. I'm not going to try to run away. I don't have enough time, and that's a juke. I don't have enough time. So we'll say that's juke one of this final session. And that's really important, right? Because some people, they'll try really hard to transition to another spot, and they don't have enough time, and then they just die. So, so my perspective is I'm just going to waste as much time as I possibly can because it benefits my team. And now I know that this hunter, right, if, if this hunter was playing two versus eight seriously, this hunter would have left me by now probably. So, and that's what I think two versus eight can be very fun because this hunter is just now having fun. This hunter, let's make this very clear. This hunter is now just seeing how long can I last for. And that's what it's coming down to. That's why this hunter's tunneling. I, I talked to this hunter at the end of the game. This hunter knows that if this was one versus four or if the hunter was playing super competitively, the hunter would have left by now. So they understand that. But now they're just saying, now it's more of a how long can this can this person last? And this this hunter is trying. This hunter is trying to kill me. And so and and I'm trying to be very transparent because I, I have tremendous respect for this hunter. And I want people to have respect for this hunter. This hunter is doing the best that they can. It can be very difficult. Um even at times where the hunter what the hunter tried to do um, was, was trying to go through the, the pallet and just keep going. And even when the hunter was doing that, I was still juking. So we, we got to remember that. So the hunter starts going away a little bit and then the hunter's like, nah, screw it. We're going to go back. And so we're going to keep kiting around this wall. And remember, see the, she's doing a good job. She look, look at it. She's really trying to get to me and She's worried about the juke now. That's the thing. And so she's just, she's starting to, she doesn't know when I'm going to juke when I'm not going to juke. And and that's what makes it very difficult for a hunter. I've been in her shoes before. Not not towards the seven cipher kite, but when you don't really know when somebody is going to juke or not. 
And this is why it's probably one of my favorite all-time kites. Um, it's just th this is pure just using jukes, using the ability to hug the wall. You need to hug the wall, by the way. A lot of people say, how do you counter clown? By hugging the wall. What you see me doing is hugging the wall when I'm kiting, and that makes it so when you juke, she's more likely to hit the wall. She can't just turn around and then just 360 turn you, and that's why you want to hug these walls when you're kiting. And I am think I'm going to go down. Yeah, she got me. And I'm keeping that in the video as well. I'm keeping that in the video because I wasn't able to survive. Um, and I think that's important. And then what's really interesting is that the hunter at this point um, just shows tremendous respect and just allows me to survive. And I think that's a very respectful thing to do. I'm not saying that you should have to do it. I'm not saying that I would do it. I would probably be super pissed off right now and I'd probably be hitting my dead body. <laughs> but this hunter, you can tell, has a good soul. She looked at that battle. She said, you did a very good job with that battle. And now she's just kind of letting me stay alive. And that is what makes it very interesting. This is a very good match. I had a really good time. And, and that hunter, um, the, the hunter knew what she was doing. And that's what made this the most enjoyable match. Probably of my, one of my careers. Um, she just, she, she, she knew, all right, I'm not supposed to do it. But you know what the hell with it? I'm going to keep tunneling this dude anyways. And that's what really made this interesting. Now, sure, I didn't survive. And I know that a lot of people, they would probably expect the, the survival, right? Especially since I'm saying that this is one of my best kite sessions. But the thing is, is that that is just using pure skill by the wall. When you have no pallet. And you really have to hug that wall when you're kiting. Because when you hug the wall... When they swing and miss, they're hitting the wall. As opposed to if you're in the out, out in the wide open, they swing and you can just turn. So if I swing and I have room to turn, then I'm going to automatically reposition my weapon mid-swing and still hit you even if you try to juke me and go behind me. But when you hug a wall like that, they don't have that ability. And that's why it's important. Like on red shirts, you want to make sure you do that. In the broken wall section, you want to hug the wall when you're when you really don't have anywhere else to go because when you juke they're going to hit the wall it allows you a little bit of flexibility so these two hunters showed tremendous respect at the end of the match i love this i love this game when this sort of stuff happens so i want to give them a big shout out i wanted to show you guys a, a seven cypher kite with no buffs one-on-one -on -one against a hunter hope you guys enjoyed it hopefully i'll be able to see you soon our discord is growing youtube is growing twitch is growing i want to say thank you to everybody for that and hopefully this video you enjoyed it hopefully you were able to learn something and yeah have a good day guys